my name is Judy Wu Smart. I am the Assistant Professor and Extension Specialist at the University of Nebraska Lincoln B Lab. We're located on East Campus in Lincoln in the Department of Entomology. Our research and extension efforts focus on better understanding what kinds of factors contribute to bee decline. And we aim to help beekeepers, landowners, and homeowners better understand the science behind it so we can make improvements to better sustain healthy bee populations. A lot of our research is student-led research from graduate students and undergraduates and a lot of the focus of our research topics is understanding the vast amount of factors from environmental stressors to biotic stressors including pests and pathogens that affect both our managed and our wild bee populations. And so these students are taking a lot of time to look into these factors, better understand them and try to find solutions that will address these issues. I'm Sheldon Brummel. I'm a master's student here at the University of Nebraska Lincoln Bee Lab, but I'm also the project manager for the Great Plains Master Beekeeping Program. We're a program that trains beekeepers throughout the Midwest, not just in Nebraska. We have an apprentice, journeyman, and master level, and you can basically self-pace and rank your way up through the program to become a certified master beekeeper. It's required to have volunteer, hands-on training, as well as education credits that can be accomplished either online or with workshops throughout the Midwest region. We also train beekeepers with open apiaries where you can show up and get your hands in a beehive even if you've never touched bees before and you're just wanting to know how to get started. We do exploratory beekeeping courses where we give a taster on beekeeping to see if that's what you want to take on, and if you don't, then we give you good tools for conservation of wild bees as well as honeybees. Hi, I'm Rogan Tokash. I'm currently a master's student here at the University of Nebraska Bee Lab. And so I actually got into beekeeping when I saw an observation hive at my local county fair. I told my mom that I wanted to become a beekeeper, and so she bought me the book Beekeeping for Dummies and told me that if I read it all the way through, cover to cover, that she'd actually look into it thinking that I wouldn't. Well, I surprised her and I did. And so later that year, I actually ended up becoming a beekeeper and that was 11 years ago and I haven't looked back since. My beekeeping experience started as a hobby beekeeper, but I wanted to kind of round out my entire beekeeping journey. A couple years ago, I went and worked for a commercial beekeeper up in North Dakota. I actually wanted to become a more rounded out beekeeper. So a few years ago, I got an internship working for commercial bee industry. I was up in Jamestown, North Dakota, working working for a guy, Browning's Honey Company, that ran 30,000 hives. This is our, my camper that I'll be using this summer that we have lovely named the Mango. And so what I'll be doing is I'll be putting some observation hives in this camper, and I'll be having some observation hives on contaminated resources like pollen and nectar, while other observation hives will actually have good resources. And what I'll be doing is I'll be painting bees and then observing those painted bees in age cohorts. And so I'm looking to see if that the bees that are painted uh, on contaminated resources, if they age faster and are progressing more quickly through the jobs that honeybees do, honeybee workers do. And so if they are, maybe that's meaning that the contaminated resources are actually impacting their age and making them progress quicker and they're actually dying faster, which you wouldn't want to see in a colony. Hello, uh, my name is Luke with UNLB Lab. I'm an apiary technician that's managing the apiary. Uh, some of the services that UNLB Lab offers are hive health inspections. Uh, we can come out to uh, beekeepers' hives and check them to see how they're doing. If there's any problems, we can um, check them over and let people know if there are and make uh, suggestions for uh, managing them. Uh, we also do uh, USDA inspections for the state to see how the uh, beehives are doing in the area. We also additionally offer um, outreach and education programming um, where we'll come out to people's um, go out to events to tell people about beekeeping. But additionally, we also do uh, research. Some of the research projects that we're working on are comparing different hive structures. Uh, another research project that we're working on would be um, how pesticides affect queen rearing. 
Uh, we also offer beekeeping workshops. Uh, we have uh, year one and year two beekeeping as well as a, a queen rearing workshop that we have um, going on this season. Hi, my name is Courtney Brummel and I am currently a graduate student here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with the Bee Lab. I'm studying different hive types to keep honeybees in and seeing how those alternative structures deal with bee functionality as well as their health. Other research that I'm looking at includes online education and seeing what kind of outreach we can have through those platforms, as well as developing more independent education mediums such as educational signage at Kimmel Orchard in Nebraska City. I'm a graduate student with the UNLB Lab and I also am the outreach coordinator, so I help to coordinate different education events where um, people ask, you know, can I learn more about bees? Can we see these honeybees or build native bee nests? And so I help coordinate those events as well as setting up the different activities where we are able to teach them um, where different native bees nest, the different plants that they eat, um, as well as just really neat opportunities for people to be more aware of the, the bees that are in their own backyard. The reason that I got into bees is actually because I am super interested in the environment and how can we work more with nature and less against her. So um, basically, how can we conserve these resources that we've been given, but also we need to be able to help each other out, right? And, and food security is a big part of that. So bees, and especially honeybees, happen to be the crossroads of you know, conserving the environment, but also helping people because with honeybees and other species of native bees, we see the, the services of pollination, right? Which is where we get a lot of our produce and our food. So that's how I got into bees. I never thought that I would be working with, with stinging insects and um, getting into hives and sticking my bare hands in the hive uh, with these insects, but I, I love it. And it's so much fun to share that with other people, especially through like observation hives, which we do with our outreach reach and education where people are able to see these uh, honeybees and you know not have the potential danger of being stung so um, I really love what I do here I love sharing with people how important uh, honeybees and native bees are and really how much everybody can help them by just planting more native plant species in your own backyard and on your land so behind me, I am here at Kimmel Orchard in Nebraska City, Nebraska, and I am looking at these different hive structures to see honeybee functionality and how they adapt to the structures. So I'm using a typical Langstroth uh, body. So over here are some deeps, which I'm using for the colonies. So that's one of my hive types. And then another hive type I'm using is just supers. So this is a smaller form of the deeps. And what I'm also looking at with that is their functionality. So is it easier to maneuver as the beekeeper? Because we're starting to see beekeeper populations include people that are older and also individuals that don't want to lift an 80 pound box when it's full of honey and bees. Um, the third hive type that I'm looking at for my research is what I've coined as the Brummel box. And that's what's behind me, this very long looking hive structure. And it's different because instead of building on vertically, it builds on horizontally. And there's a lot less heavy maneuvering of, of equipment. And also the bees, they expand horizontally. So I'm looking at thermal regulation as well as honey production, brood production, and uh, pollen production within these different hive structures. Kimmel Orchard is a perfect uh, site for us to not only engage uh, with the research, but also the education. So we're taking different aspects of the orchard and improving their habitat, enhancing the landscape for pollinators, but it also establishes a beautiful demonstration site for uh, the public to enjoy and to view how we can incorporate pollinator-friendly habitats in an orchard system. It's also a wonderful site for adult education training for beekeepers and landowners and youth outreach programs um, that allow us to really educate about farm to table concepts and balancing the need of conservation and pest control in an agroecosystem like this. If our bees do well for the season, we do have uh, uh, honey that we offer for sale. The proceeds go towards our research for beekeeping. Uh, some of the places that we offer our honey for sale uh, would be uh, East and City Campus as well as Kimmel Orchard. On East Campus, we have Harding Hall. On uh, City Campus, we have Morrill Hall. For more information, uh, you can contact us either on our website or you can email us.